All right, guys, welcome back to another video with Martin and me, Curbex UK. Um, today, we're going to be going into... No, the Manchester's abandoned station, oh, Mayfield. That's <laughs> Manchester's abandoned, yeah, Mayfield train station. It used to be used all the time. And then I think it got shut down in... Yeah, it was a relief station for Piccadilly Station, which was then called London Road. Mayfield was a relief station. Huge. Then I think it got closed as a station, then it reopened as a parcels depot. And we're gonna go and have a look around on the top bits, underneath, and then I'll check back in with you at the end of the video. So me and mine are out of the car now, and we're finally in Mayfield Station, and we're going up this old maintenance cobbled road, up to platform level to have a look around. The yellow X is where we've just entered, and the green one is where we're heading to. I did say cobbles before, but they're actually man-made and pressed into the shape. So, let's walk up to platform level. So we just got to the top of the uh, the old, it's actually man-made cast bricks. We just got to the top of it now and you can see Mayfield in the background and we're just going to go around, keep up with the tour. So this is the site that you hit with when you get to platform level. Now there used to be a huge roof on this but it was dismantled and taken down in February of 2013 due to how long it had been abandoned. These are some of the old platforms. Because after it was closed down as a train section, it was used as a parcels depot. So in this clip, you can see all that's left of the roof is that tiny little bit of frame in there, which has been completely weathered. So Mayfield was opened on the 8th of August 1910, and Mayfield was constructed as a four-platform relief station adjacent to Piccadilly to try and alleviate overcrowding, as it was a big issue back then. And now I'm going to attempt to tell you some of the history of the station in my own words as best I can, so bear with me. So, the story of the modern Mayfield starts when, in 1782, Thomas Hoyle established the Mayfield Print Works on the edge of Manchester. Hoyle chose Mayfield because he needed ready access to the water provided by the River Medlock. So, modern day Mayfield is covered in purple and I'm about to tell you why. It's because in 1800, Hoyle, then his son, Thomas Hoyle Jr, and then Jr's three sons-in-law, mastered methods of printing colours, particularly purple, onto calico cloth. Purples were a huge technical challenge at the time, meaning the use of the colour was preserved for the rich and influential. What Hoyle and family had done is push the boundaries of that day's scientific knowledge. And then later on, they would attract visitors to the Mayfield, Mayfield Works who would marvel at the fact that they could manage to print a mile of calico cloth in one hour. And this was a symbol of industrial achievement through technology, especially for that time era. Sadly, overproduction of calico led in 1899 to the creation of the Calico Printers Association in a bid to maintain prices. St. James's Building, which stands on Oxford Street to this day, was the headquarters and offices for calico printers. But the winds of the economy were changing as cheaper imports eroded prices and started to ruin business. So, where are we going now, Connor? Right into the, um, the depot part. That's what we've gone down. So, is that, is that underneath the station? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Right, okay, so we're going into so the other part of the station, the undercroft where all the main parcels that all used to be. <laughs> At the start of the century, the Mayfield Printworks were demolished and replaced with a new Mayfield train station, which opened in 1910. Hoyle, is still remembered today in the street name which links Mayfield to the Mancunian Way. So we're just following my cursor now down Temperance Street and onto Hoyle Street which is the street which is named after Thomas Hoyle. So there you go a brief history of Mayfield and Calico Printers from Kerbex UK. So now we're going from the top down to street level and into a side entrance which takes you round to the parcel depot part of Mayfield which we're going to go and have a little look round now. So Jonathan the tour guide takes us <coughs> through this little wooden door 
and I noticed on the left here is look at the ironwork or whichever type of metal it is holding up that ramp which the parcel depot used but he takes us inside now underneath Mayfield and it was massive he did this test where he said he was going to get everybody in a little group together and we're all going to scream and I managed to actually record it and the echo did go on for a while after everyone had stopped screaming and I think it's coming up in a few seconds now so I'll stop talking and I'll let you listen to how long the echo just carried on for so we are now coming up to the bit where he does that little test with the echo and I'll stop talking now like I said a minute ago and I'll let you listen to it it's amazing I hope my Canon's microphone picked up the um, the echoing of that scream that we all did just then, just so we can show you how big this place is. Um, and there wasn't really a lot to see underneath, but it was such such a huge space to walk around. And I do recommend to anyone that you take the tour. The tour guide is John Schofield. I think it's Jonathan Schofield. And it is a good thing to do because he does let you he does give you little bits of time here and there just to go and wander around and take pictures and <clears throat> it's just a great experience really. Now I kept stopping to take pictures and stuff, so I ended up getting quite far behind the rest of the tour. As you can see they're all down there now. Um, I was doing long exposure pictures and stuff like that. Um, I'll put the picture in at the end, but I actually took a picture where it looks like there's a man in a boiler suit stood there, but I don't know whether it is a man in a boiler suit or it's just the camera's caught someone and then not processed it properly, but I'll, I'll put it up at the end anyway for you to have a look. But I took um, a long exposure down here and it actually pretty much looked like it was daylight, the picture. I'll probably put that one in at the end as well. But everybody's all the way up there now, and I'm having to like rush, that's why my camera's getting a bit shaky. Um, but it is damp as well in there, so it's like, it's not very well maintained or anything like that. No one really uh, looks after it. So now we're back out in the fresh air and something that the developers have done which is quite nice is they've kept these railway sleepers and turned them into like a sort of bench or an edging and there was a few of them dotted around which I noticed which was quite a nice little touch and speaking of developers the developers want to transform it all into housing for families and bring the river medlock back so it'll go through the park and you'll be able to walk next to its bank which you've not been able to do for many 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 years and it would be a quite a nice touch Alright guys, it's been Kerbex and we've just had a look around Mayfield Station with Martin Zero, he's just getting some river shots at the moment but uh, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you stuck around till the end and you liked it and if you did like it, feel free to subscribe and follow me on my journeys and explores a lot of them involve Martin, but yeah, I just want to say thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next one Thanks for watching, please like, comment, share and subscribe, check out the social medias and I'll leave you with a few pictures that I have taken inside and some older pictures. Thanks again, see you later.